All right, so we're in chapter two on describing change rates. Now this is section 2.4 on rates of change, and we're looking at the numerical limits and non-existence. So the rate of change of a function at a point is equivalent to the slope of the line that is tangent to the graph of that function at that point. Now a rate of change can be estimated numerically by using limits and slopes of secant lines as well. And so how to find that is the derivative of a point of f at input a is the limit of the slopes of the secants. And so f prime of a is equal to the limit as x approaches a of f of x minus f of a all over x minus a. And so we'll use that to find our uh, slopes of the secants. And then after that, when we find the limit of that, that'll give us the f prime of a if uh, when we approach from the left and from the right, we get the same value. All right, so uh, the numerically estimating limits is going to require us to use the tables again, doing going from our left side and also from the right side to find those slopes of the tangent lines. So let's look first at a couple of figures and see if we think it's going to actually be able to uh, have a proper rate of change that we can find the derivative of or the f prime of x. So here we have in figure 2.30 a rate of change corresponding to each input value within the interval. Now the key thing is is with the we can find that rate of change over the whole interval except for those endpoints because on open intervals it's every point in between except for the exact endpoints because we can't go from the left or here we can't go from the right if we use that endpoint. So we can do every other point because we can go one point to the left and then uh, then we can find the point exactly to the right tangent, but not that endpoint. Okay. Now, if we look at <clears throat> two, three, one, we have a rate of change at every point on the interval except for p, because the tangent line here is actually going to be a vertical line. And I'm not going to attempt to draw that, but that would be a vertical line. And the slope of a vertical line is undefined, and so therefore we can't actually get a, a slope of that tangent line. Now in figure 2.32 here, it describes a sharp point at P, okay? So with that sharp point here, what's gonna happen is as we go this direction, we'll get one slope or a limit going this way. And when we start doing things from the right side, we'll get another limit. And those two limits are gonna be different. And therefore we're not gonna be able to find uh, the overall limit of the uh, tangent line because it's not gonna, it's not gonna have a, a same slope as going from the left or the right. Okay, so sharp points aren't going to have a tangent line that we can find the slope of. Same thing works with this one where we have a break at P. So, you know, this one's not continuous because if we go, you know, from the left, then we have to pick up our pin and then we can go to that direction. Okay, so it doesn't exist at the break, uh, even though the slope does exist at all other points on the open interval of the graph. So all other points we can find uh, a slope but just not at the point P there. All right, so points where derivatives do not exist. So if a function is not continuous or it has a sharp corner at some point P, then the rate of change does not exist at that point. Now, if a continuous function has a point P where the tangent line at P is vertical, that also doesn't have um, a rate of change that exists. So there's two kind of examples there where rate of change or the derivatives do not exist. Now remember that open interval is an interval that does not contain the endpoints. So if we have you know some kind of a graph, those exact endpoints are not part of the open interval. It has everything in between that we can find, but just not those endpoints. Now, what's a differentiable function? Well, a function is differentiable at a point. Say you know we have this point p. Well, if we're, let me write it, point P, if the instantaneous rate of change or derivative of that function exists at that point. Now, a function is differentiable over the open interval only if the instantaneous rate of change or the derivative of that function exists for every point whose input is in the interval. So basically, you have to have uh, a tangent line at each of those points in that whole interval, except for the endpoints, and then you can get the derivative. Now, we don't consider tangents or differentiability at endpoints of intervals because these points are, you can't, you can't go to the left or to the right. You know, we, like I just said, you can't go this way and you can't go that right of that point because your the graph ends right there. And so you can't have something to the right. Now, the use of the term differentiable to describe the exist of, this existence of the instantaneous rate of change comes from the concept of derivatives. And so derivatives and differentiable, I kinda, they go kind of hand in hand there. All right, let's stop there.